Chinese, uh, they want to be a player on the world stage. She controls the largest military force in the world. The cost of conflict with China could be Armageddon. As the conflict between Israel and Hamas intensifies, China has made a bold move to show its support for Palestine and to position itself strategically in the region. Of course, China is looking to protect its interest in the Middle East, and it knows that it'd have to increase its military presence in the area in order to stand a chance. And this is exactly what China is doing. Join us as we discuss how and why China is positioning its warships near Israel. The Middle East has been a hotspot for geopolitical tensions and conflicts for decades. The U.S. and China, as two of the world's major powers, have both been involved in the region for various reasons. However, in the wake of the recent violence that erupted in the region, China has been increasing its naval presence and activities in the area. The Chinese Ministry of Defense announced that the 44th Naval Escort Task Force has been performing regular missions in the region since May this year. The task force consists of three warships, Zibo, Jingzhou, and Kuangdaohu. These ships have been escorting civilian vessels, conducting anti-piracy operations, and enhancing cooperation with regional navies. One of the recent examples of such cooperation was a joint exercise with the Omani Navy during a visit to Oman. The exercise involved communication, formation, and maneuvering drills, as well as a friendly basketball match between the sailors of both countries. After leaving Oman, the Chinese Naval Task Force sailed to Kuwait, where they arrived on October 18th for a five-day goodwill visit. They were greeted by a large crowd of Kuwaiti military officials, Chinese embassy staff, and overseas Chinese at the Shuwake port. The visit aimed to strengthen the friendship and mutual trust between China and Kuwait, as well as to showcase the achievements and capabilities of the Chinese Navy. The visit to Kuwait was the first by a Chinese naval task force since the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries in 1971. It also marks the 30th anniversary of the liberation of Kuwait from Iraqi occupation in which China played a constructive role as a permanent member of the UN Security Council. The Chinese Naval Task Force is expected to continue its journey to other countries in the region as part of China's effort to promote peace and stability in the Middle East, as well as protect its interests and citizens in the area. The new convoy that took over the escort mission is under the command of the PLA Northern Theater. It comprises the Urumqi, a Type 0252 destroyer, the frigate Linya, and the supply ship Dongpinggu. The Urumqi and the Linyi are both equipped with advanced weapons and sensors and have enhanced capabilities for air defense, anti-submarine, and electronic warfare. The new convoy has already started its operations in the region, escorting a Panamanian cargo ship to a safe destination earlier this month. The Linyi, which was commissioned in 2019, participated in its first escort mission, while the Urumqi, which was commissioned in 2018, had already gained some experience in a previous escort mission in the Gulf of Aden two years ago. The Zebo, which was part of the outgoing task force, also had its debut escort mission on this tour. The Zebo is a new generation destroyer that was commissioned in January of 2020. It has a stealthy design and a powerful radar system and can carry various missiles and torpedoes. The Chinese Navy has been sending escort task forces to the Gulf of Aden since 2008 as part of its efforts to safeguard the international shipping lanes and contribute to global maritime security. The Chinese Navy has also been expanding its presence and influence in other regions, such as the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Pacific Ocean. China's naval presence in the Middle East comes at a time when the United States is also increasing its military deployment there, raising the possibility of a confrontation. China has six warships operating in the Middle Eastern waters, according to a statement from the Chinese Ministry of Defense. These include the 44th and the 45th Naval Escort Task Force, which are responsible for escorting civilian vessels and conducting anti-piracy operations in the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea. The task forces also conduct joint exercises and goodwill visits with some of the regional navies, such as Oman and Kuwait. The other four warships are part of the 39th Escort Task Force, which is on a long-distance voyage to the Mediterranean Sea. The task force consists of two Type 054A frigates, the Huanggang and the Yangzhou, 
and two Type 01 amphibious transport docks, the Kunlishang and the Changbeishan. The task force has visited several countries along the way, such as Egypt, Greece, and Turkey, and has participated in a multinational naval exercise hosted by Russia in the Black Sea. The United States, on the other hand, has also deployed a large number of warships to the region in response to the attacks on Israel on October 7, which was claimed by Iran-backed militias. The attack triggered a series of retaliatory strikes by Israel, which escalated the situation in the region. The United States sent its most advanced carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, and its associated battle group to the eastern Mediterranean to support Israel and deter further attacks. The USS Dwight D. Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group is also on its way to the region to join the USS Harry S. Truman Carrier Strike Group which is already operating in the Arabian Sea. The Pentagon also announced the deployment of an additional command ship, the USS Mount Whitney, to the eastern Mediterranean to coordinate the naval operations and provide command and control capabilities. The USS Mount Whitney is the flagship of the U.S. 6th Fleet, which oversees the naval forces in Europe and Africa. The United States also demonstrated its anti-missile and anti-drone capabilities in the region, by successfully intercepting and neutralizing multiple Houthi missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles in the Red Sea on October 19. The interception was carried out by the USS Kearney, an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer, which is part of the USS Iwo Jima Amphibious Ready Group. The interception was a rare occurrence as the United States usually does not engage in the Houthi launches, which are mostly aimed at Saudi Arabia. The interception also showed the United States' readiness to defend its allies and the interest in the region, especially in light of the rising tensions in Israel. One of the notable incidents that involved the United States and the Houthis was in October of 2016, when the USS Mason, a Navy destroyer, used its countermeasures to fend off an attempted attack in the Red Sea. The attack was aimed at the USS Mason and other ships nearby, which were providing support to the Saudi-led coalition fighting the Houthis in Yemen. In retaliation, the United States launched sea-launched cruise missiles at the Houthi radar facilities in Yemen, which were believed to be responsible for the attack. The presence of both Chinese and U.S. warships in the region indicates the involvement and influence of these two global powers in the region. The region is also a source of tension and competition between the two countries, as they have different views and positions on some of the regional issues, such as the Iranian nuclear deal, the Syrian civil war, and the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. The tension between the two countries has also been exacerbated by the Ukraine conflict, which has pitted Russia against the West. China has been aligning itself with Russia and has expressed its opposition to the U.S. and NATO's interference and sanctions on Russia. China has also been supporting Russia's military and diplomatic actions in the region, such as the recent naval exercise in the Black Sea. However, the likelihood of a direct confrontation between the Chinese and U.S. navies in the region remains relatively low, as they have been maintaining some communication and coordination mechanisms, such as the Code for Unplanned Encounters at Sea, also known as CUES, and the Military Maritime Consultative Agreement, or MMCA. These mechanisms are designed to prevent or manage any potential incidents or crises in the region and to promote mutual understanding and trust between the two navies. Also, frankly speaking, the United States still has a clear advantage over China in terms of its global military presence and capabilities. The two U.S. carrier strike groups that are currently deployed in the eastern Mediterranean are a testament to the U.S. naval power and projection. The carrier strike groups consist of more ships and have more firepower, especially with the air assets that accompany them. Bryden Sperling, a senior research leader for defense and security at the European branch of the RAND think tank, commented on the gap between the U.S. and China in this regard. He said, the network of bases and partnerships the U.S. has around the world and its familiarity with operating globally is still leagues ahead of what China can do. And it is arguable whether China will be able to match in the future, even if they would like to do so. One of the common methods of measuring the naval power of different countries is to compare the number and types of warships they possess. According to this method, the U.S. still has an edge over China based on the latest data. China is often called the world's largest navy because it has the most number of ships in total.
However, the U.S. has more of the most powerful and versatile types of warships, which are more suitable for maritime warfare. These include aircraft carriers, cruisers, destroyers, and submarines. These types of warships have greater range, speed, firepower, and survivability than the lighter and smaller types of warships, such as frigates and coastal patrol vessels. China has lighter and smaller types of warships, which could give it an advantage in a conflict that is confined to the coastal areas near China, such as the Taiwan Strait. These types of warships are more agile, stealthy, and numerous than the heavier and larger types of warships, and could pose a threat to the U.S. ships with their anti-ship missiles and torpedoes. However, the U.S. has the ability to deploy deploy a large and formidable naval force to the Western Pacific region in case of a war with China. The U.S. does not usually station all of its naval forces in the region, but it could mobilize and reinforce its ships from other parts of the world if war were imminent. The U.S. also has a network of allies and partners in the region, such as Japan, Australia, and South Korea which could provide support and access to the U.S. naval forces. Also, the number of warships a country has is not the only factor that determines its naval power in today's world. Another crucial factor is the ability of a country to launch missile strikes against its enemy from long distances. The U.S. has an advantage over China in this aspect, as it has more standoff missiles, which can be fired from more than 1,500 kilometers away. Missile strikes are more effective and efficient than ship-to-ship -ship combat, and they can inflict more damage and avoid more risks. Therefore, the number of weapons platforms, which are any structures from which weapons can be deployed, such as ships, is less important than the number of missiles that can be launched from various platforms against enemy targets. A U.S. think tank has estimated that if China started a war with Taiwan, the U.S. could launch more than 5,000 anti-ship missiles in the first three to four weeks of the conflict. These missiles could be launched from different platforms, such as aircraft, submarines, surface ships, and land-based launchers. These missiles could target and destroy China's warships, especially the lighter and smaller ones, which are more vulnerable to missile attacks. The U.S. Navy also has superior cyber capabilities compared with the Chinese Navy. The U.S. Navy has a dedicated cyber force known as the 10th Fleet, which has more than 19,000 active and reserve personnel. The 10th Fleet has 26 active commands, 40 cyber mission force units, and 29 reserve commands around the world which could be mobilized to strike China in the event of war. The 10th Fleet's mission would likely aim to disable, disrupt, and destroy the command and control and fighting effectiveness of the Chinese Navy by hacking into their networks, systems, and devices. The U.S. Navy's cyber force has proven its skills and abilities in previous conflicts, such as the Ukraine crisis in early 2022. The U.S. Navy's cyber personnel, alongside Ukrainian counterparts, successfully blocked what could have been crippling cyber attacks by Russia before its invasion of Ukraine. The cyber defense operation prevented Russia from disrupting Ukraine's power grid, communications, and military operations, and helped Ukraine to resist Russian aggression. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.